Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. And now we come to the book of Jana'is funerals. So the book of Jana'is funerals, it has been placed here after the book of Salah. Even though its place is not after the book of Salah. But the reason why Kitabul Jana'is is placed immediately after book of Salah is because one of the causes which brings the deceased person the most amount of reward and benefit is Salatul Janazah. So in the books of Fiqh, Kitabul Janais, the book of Janais, it is divided into three sets of rulings. Rulings before the person's death and rulings during the person's death and rulings after a person's death. So as for the rulings of Janais before a person's death, then firstly by visiting that person because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he mentioned the six rights of a Muslim upon a Muslim and he said Ta'udul Marid that you visit the deceased or you visit the ill and the wording Ta'ud it demonstrates or it means that you repeat your visiting of the deceased person again and again so how should we visit or what are the etiquettes of visiting the ill person first of all you should visit him during the visiting times. So this person, he goes to visit an ill person at 11 o'clock at night or 12 o'clock at night. Is that correct? Or he goes to visit the deceased person whilst he is taking his medicine. Rather, you should visit the ill person during those times which have been set for visiting him, during the visiting hours. For example, 4 p.m. after or 4 p.m. at Asr. And then while sitting with him, that you don't elongate your sitting with him. So you don't prolong your sitting with him. You eat and you drink and you talk. Rather, the visit and the sitting with him should, the visiting and the sitting with him should be short, five minutes, three minutes. And when you're visiting an ill person, what should you say to him? You say, لا بأس طهور, inshallah, no problem, inshallah, it is purification. Meaning, this illness, it will cease. However, your sins are being cleansed. Some people, they enter upon the deceased, the ill person. And what do they say to him? They say, by Allah, you're wretched. And, 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 and you know, you're misfortunate. You're not deserving of being ill. And I've got, I have no power to do anything. You know how Britons are like. And it's as if this person is demonstrating that he is more merciful to this person than Allah. It's as if that person is causing him to insult Allah and be, and, and be displeased with the decree of Allah. And the person goes to his house or goes to the hospital and he says, you're not even in a hospital, this is a graveyard you're already in. Or he'll say, just a week ago, somebody was in this hospital from my friends and he died. And then that person, he, he was uh, cremated. He was not even buried. And this is how some people, when they visit the ill, they make them lose hope in the mercy of Allah. But this person who studied Kitab Tawheed, he goes to the, the ill person, Come. gives him the greetings of Salam. Allah. He makes the dua, la ba's tahuran insha'Allah. And this person reminds the ill person that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, how amazing is the affair of the believer, all of his affairs goodness. And that ill person will say, look, every day come and visit me. Some people are like shaitan, in fact, more severe than shaitan. So these are the rulings which pertain to visiting a person and this is before his death. And then there are rulings which pertain to the moments of death. So you have a person and he's on his deathbed and you can almost see his, his final moments. Or if you see a person and there's a fire in the house, what should you do? You should remind the person to say the shahada la ilaha illallah but gently because this person he's still ill and maybe he's in the final moments of his life so you should encourage him to say la ilaha illallah but gently Naam. Mm -hmm. subtly. so you encourage him to say la ilaha illallah and if he does not say la ilaha illallah leave him for a short while and then after a few minutes again say la ilaha illallah gently and then maybe leave it for a few minutes and then say la ilaha illallah again and then after that person, we know that he has died. Then the rulings are that his eyes are closed and his joints are loosened. And also we have to ascertain his death because perhaps he has not died. And then after this are the next set of rulings, i.e. washing his and shrouding him and then performing salah upon him. So when it comes to the salah upon a deceased person, 
if the deceased person is a male, then the imam stands at his head, parallel, parallel to his head, meaning if that is the qibla, the head is on the right hand side and the feet are towards the left hand side and the imam stands directly behind his head and then says Allahu Akbar. And as for a woman, then the imam stands in the parallel to the middle of the woman. It's no. as if the imam is concealing her from the people behind him. So the imam says Allahu Akbar. He says Allahu Akbar. He says the isti'adha and bismillah and then surah al-fatiha without dua al-istiftah. And if the imam recites after surah al-fatiha an ayah or more than a few ayat, it's correct. And then after this, a person or the imam raises, the, he says Allahu Akbar and then he sends salutations upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Salat al-Ibrahimiyyah and then he says Allahu Akbar and then he supplicates for the deceased person and it is better for a person to repeat the ad'iyah which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to say and then he says Allahu Akbar once yes. and then he makes one taslim or two and then the body of the deceased is carried to the graveyard. Naam. Wallahu a'lam. Wa sallallahu ala nabiya Muhammad wa ala sahibu wa sallam. Jazakum Allah khair.